spending our time value in valuable ways before now and the rapture, dead in Christ, or if we're still alive, we need to find out what the gospel is, and when we hear things that seem okay to us, check them out. Commentary on author Josh McDowell. Here's why the doctrine of being saved by faith is a heresy, according to Josh McDowell. That bowled me over. I've used his uh, resource material on evidence that demands a verdict for decades. Never investigated it that much, uh, what his theology was. So, Suzette Gutierrez Cachilla uh, reports on this. And I've made comments on this within brackets from uh, my website, BibleStudyManuals.net. So, she writes... Christian apologist, author, and evangelist Josh McDowell said, the doctrine of being saved by faith, and that is being taught in many churches today, is utter heresy. McDowell, speaking on a TV program, challenged the popular doctrine, saying, many preachers today teach you're saved by faith, when in fact it's not true. He said those who teach and believe that a person is saved by faith are practically a cult. That's a cult. That's a sect, he said in a video recording. You can look at this. Click on here. Or here's the uh, recording uh, title of the TV program. And you, I was shocked. I had to go listen to that recording several times. And it sounded like the man was out of control. Maybe he just had a bad day. Then he goes on to say, it's impossible to be saved by faith. And he goes on, one of the greatest heresies taught today is salvation by faith, he emphasized. So he's repeating himself. Out of control, it seems. McDowell explained that if anybody can be saved by faith, then Jesus didn't have to come because faith would have been enough. I almost turned my head around three times. He almost pointed out that having faith does not save anybody. He also pointed out that having faith does not save anybody, because if it did, almost everyone would have been saved already. Another shocking thing. Well, here I go. Here's my comment. If what he just said is true, this is true, then Jesus, John, Paul, Luke, Peter, others are preaching heresy. Luke 7.50, John 1, 12 to 13, 3, 16, 5, 24. I'm going to read the first one, Luke 7.50, and see what it says. Jesus said these words. And Philippians 3 9 and so on all these passages and many more I could have done found dozens more for salvation is indicated in all of these passages and many many more as solely by faith that's all that's mentioned relative to what an individual must do in order to have eternal life albeit I must say it is all by the grace of God it's all by the grace of God that we even exist after one expresses a moment of faith alone in Christ alone, the grace of God takes over. He gives you eternal life, which is stipulated. It's either stipulated in these passages or it's implied. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. He gave. Did you earn that? No, he did it out of his grace. That whoever believes in him, oh, there's the faith, should never perish but have everlasting life. All I have to do is believe. The grace of God will provide it. It's not so stipulated, but it certainly is implied. So I read what Jesus said, Luke 7:50. And he, Jesus, said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. He didn't say your grace has saved you, or his grace has saved you. Your faith has saved you. Does that make him a heretic? He did not tell her that God's grace has saved you, did he? Albeit it is implied because the woman did not deserve salvation, nor do any of us, nor do any anything, nor did the woman do anything to express uh, anything except to express a moment of faith alone in Christ alone. Is Jesus a heretic? Furthermore, the phrase, if anybody can be saved by faith, then Jesus didn't have to come because faith would have been enough, does not make sense. Although scripture teaches that anybody of accountable age can be saved by a single moment of faith alone in Christ alone, it's alone because it's the only thing that's there. The word alone doesn't uh, have to be there. If John 3.16, what is the only thing you have to do in order to have eternal life? You personally. Believe. Believe God did gave his one only son for your sins. This implies a moment of faith in Christ paying for one's sins. 
it requires that Christ must actually pay for mankind's sins, and he did just that on the cross. So it doesn't say we don't need him if we're going to be saved by faith alone. Otherwise, why would someone believe that Jesus Christ came to pay for one's sins if he didn't come to do that at all? This, this wording doesn't make any sense. There's a lot of emotion in him because he was jumping around and yelling and so on. And it shocked the whole crowd there at the TV show, I could tell. They all went silent. Note that those who are not accountable will be saved, for they, are not, they have not the capacity to refuse to believe until they are accountable. In other words, the refusal to believe, right? In John 3.18, those that uh, have not believed yet are stand condemned. So we are standing condemned until we do believe. In any case, Scripture teaches in dozens of places that a moment of faith alone in Christ alone, faith in his propitiation for the sins of the whole world, is 1 John 2, 2. So he did come and didn't pay for, did pay for sins. What's your responsibility? To believe. And that alone, that will indeed result in possession forever of eternal life. Reference John 3, 16 and many other passages. I went to the Bible and just dozens and dozens of passages say, you believe and you have eternal life. But since all men are born in sin, including the attitude that they don't have an accountability before God, which I think Mr. McDowell missed, then few will choose to believe. He says everybody will choose if it's by faith alone. Well, I haven't met too many people, if it's by faith alone, that say that. They don't want to believe in God at all, never mind in his Son for eternal life. Despite the availability of salvation unto eternal life, because of 1 John 2, 2, he's already paid for your sins. And this would be by a moment of faith alone in Christ alone. And this is because he actually did come and actually did pay for all of mankind's sins. 1 John 2, 2. But then McDowell goes on and makes, makes it even worse. McDowell goes on to say, if you could be saved by faith, you wouldn't need Jesus. Just build up your faith. I don't even know what that means. These statements of Josh McDowell do not make sense. The content of the faith according to Scripture what one believes in for salvation unto eternal life is to trust alone in Jesus Christ's propitiation for one's sins alone. Again, 1 John 2, 2. I don't know how I can keep saying these same verses over and over again, and it's like he didn't, doesn't have those in, there, in his Bible. So if you could be saved by faith, and Scripture says so, and it defines the specific content of that faith, faith and since the content of the faith requires Jesus' propitiation for sins, in the sense of needing Jesus to provide payment for one's sins, then how can Josh McDowell say you wouldn't need Jesus? Wow, you really do need him for everything. Your, your, self, your, your faith is a product of accepting what has already been done for you. Josh McDowell goes on to say, everybody I know in the world has faith. Now this That's one... Uh, unfathomable sentence and statement after another he makes. Does that make them a believer? No. Yeah, it does, in whatever they believe. No, it, it does mean their sins are forgiven. No. Does it mean their sins are forgiven? No. Really? Does that mean they're going to spend eternity with Yahweh? No. But they have faith, he added. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, you, again, nonsensical. Everybody I know in the world has faith. But then I ask, Faith in what? Faith in Christ? What's the content? I don't think so. Everyone in the world believes something, therefore, he is a believer in something. He has faith in something. But what does this have to do with the subject at hand? He's talking in such generalities, we don't know what he's talking about. Does he change the subject? The issue is, what is the content of your faith? If it matches what Scripture says, aha, he never went to Scripture, by the way. If, the, if it matches what Scripture says you need to believe in, and you believe, then you immediately have forever possession of eternal life, because eternal life is eternal. I'm just using words here. A bunch of uh, passages here, salvation passages. Now, Scripture does indicate that few will believe in Jesus and make it to heaven. The path is narrow. And only a remnant will believe in Jesus Christ's payment for their sins and be saved unto eternal life. So if it's that easy, and it is, you don't do anything. You just accept that it it's true. Oh, he doesn't like the idea of mental ascent. Well, do you believe the sky is blue? Yes. So you go outside, 
and it's not. It's gray. It's cloudy. Well, you didn't believe enough because if you did believe hard enough, it would turn blue. Really? McDowell goes on to say rather quizzically, everybody I know in the world has faith. Does that make them a believer? No. This, too, does not make sense. Everybody in the world believes in something. Does this make them a believer? Yes. They believe in something, so they are a believer. By the way, I believe that the world is a sphere. That makes me a believer, but it won't get me eternal life. And it doesn't make the, wor the, the world a sphere. It it's already is a sphere. If you believe it's flat, and even today some people do, uh, the evidence shows that it's a sphere. But they think that it's all a hoax that we have satellites up in the, in the atmosphere. So, what nonsense. Sounds like his mind is impaired. If he intended to mean a believer in Christ unto eternal life, <clears throat> he did not so stipulate the content of what one must believe in order to have eternal life. He's not being specific. He's being very general. Nevertheless, I still don't get what point he is trying to make. It's all about the content of what you believe that determines if you are a believer in Jesus Christ unto eternal life. You can believe he's a great teacher. That won't get you eternal life. And that's not what the Bible teaches for you to do to have eternal life. Just pick one of the many verses that determine the content of what one must believe in order to have eternal life. These are salvation, salvation in the Bible, and I did a number, quite a number of passages, and investigated them. You can't be saved, Josh McDowell goes on to say. If you could be saved by faith, you don't need Jesus. He repeated. He thinks now he's repeated himself. So I'm thinking he's not correcting himself. This is what he actually believes. These statements of Josh McDowell do not make sense. The content of the faith according to Scripture, what must one must believe in for salvation unto eternal life is to trust alone in Jesus Christ's propitiation for one's sins alone. Again, I'm repeating myself because he's repeating himself. This is how you argue, by the way. Sometimes people just don't get the point. You have to repeat the argument from Scripture. So if you could be saved by faith, and Scripture says so and defines the specific content of that faith. And since the content of the faith requires, in the sense of needing Jesus, to provide payment for one's sins, then how can Josh McDowell say, again, you wouldn't need Jesus? And he goes on to say, so how can anybody be saved exactly? Okay, now we're getting some more detail. How can a person be saved <clears throat> according to the Bible's definition of salvation? Now he's going to Scripture. And he picks a good verse. We are saved by grace through faith, not by faith, uh, not by faith. Oh, what? We are saved by grace through faith, not by faith. What does he, what does he mean? If you say by faith, you say by through faith. Those two words can be interchangeable. As a matter of fact, there's a Greek word, dia, can mean either. And it is. You can go through a concordance and find how many times dia means through and how many times the concordance goes uh, through and say mean by. I'd like to see if somewhere along the line, somewhere in the Bible says, say, by, through faith. By grace, through faith in Jesus. So it's by grace, but it's through faith in Jesus. It's both. McDowell explained it's not faith that saved us. It was the grace of God. Well, yes, it was. But unless we believe, we don't get saved. So the faith saves us as well. I, yeah, so at last, we have a passage in Scripture to look at and determine its meaning. So when he looks at the Bible, we come away with two different things, my view and his view. Who is correct here? Well, let's read it. For by grace you have been saved, literally having, or having been saved through faith. And that salvation is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Now look, the Greek word dia in Ephesians 2.8 means by or through faith. So there is no distinction in meaning anyway. Both words by and through mean the same thing. One is saved through by because of one's expression of a moment of faith alone in Christ alone in the sense of trusting in Christ's payments, propitiation for one's sins, and by through because of God's grace and making available a gift to the one who believes in his Son of that salvation unto, for that salvation unto eternal life without requiring anything meritorious in return to deserve that payment because grace equals unmerited favor. Are, are we clear on that? Note what Jesus said to a woman whom he had forgiven of her sins. And he, Jesus, said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Notice the woman has saved through by, same word, faith. Implied in this 
was the grace unmerited favor provision of forgiveness